Good morning. Welcome to Matins with Noodle. Noodle has just gotten up off of the Psalms and wandered away, but he may be back soon. Oh, yep, here he comes. Noodle, are you going to do that thing where you show your butt to the internet again? Nobody wants to see your butt. Nobody. Not me, not you, not Meatball, definitely not the internet. Well, I'm so glad that you can join us for our final round of Matins before the weekend. Um, at this point, I'm not sure if we're going to continue matins through Holy Week or if we'll pick them up again after Easter. We may take a break, so I'll keep you in the loop about that. Um, and I hope that you will join us for live stream worship at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Same place. Let's begin with our opening dialogue. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. May praise Christ all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Creator, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray. O oh God of all creation, as the tail follows the cat, may your spirit go with us this day, dynamic, playful, a part of who we are, and yet free from our own imperfect desires and demands. May you surprise us with your grace, startle us with your presence, and abide with us throughout this day and every day. Amen. We will now read Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pastor. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. So there actually may be a couple more verses, but Noodle is currently sprawled over the psalm book, so we're just going to have to work with what we have. Let us prepare to welcome the gospel. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. Yes, Noodle, it is appropriate to stand for the gospel, but maybe not try to eat the iPad. The look he gave me, my goodness. Our reading comes to us from John chapter 12, verses 9 through 19. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. So yesterday, we talked about how Jesus riding on a donkey was a nod not just to him being the king of Israel, but of the entire world. And, you know, as Jesus goes riding along and everybody's gathering around him, you know, the Pharisees look at each other and say, well, we can't do anything. The entire world is following him. So to add to this idea of the entire world being drawn to Jesus, we have some Greeks who want to see Jesus. 
Now, way back when I was in college, my freshman year, I was in a class and we were reading medieval Latin. Yes, I, I was ready to be a productive and contributing member to society. But we were reading this poet called Prudentius. And Prudentius had written this epic poem about the battle between the virtues and the vices. So you have generosity, you know, beating the crap out of avarice and, you know, chastity, you know, giving lust what for. I mean, it was, it was wild. But at the end of this entire poem, all the virtues gather together and they build this the holy city of God. And Prudentius goes into extreme detail of how beautiful this city is, how it's decorated, and one of the crowning jewels of this city is the pearl without price. You know, we remember the parable, right? You know, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl that, you know, a man sold everything he owned in order to get. And so, you know, this metaphorical pearl, which is a symbol for the kingdom of heaven, is now there in the city. And, you know, the Latin was really convoluted. You know, it, it's medieval Latin. And so, you know, all the grammar is falling apart because Rome has fallen, or at least that's how it felt to us. And my friend Sarah and I are trying to make sense of this and we're translating it in class. And poor Sarah is just all hung up and confused on, well, who sold this pearl? Who bought this pearl? What's going on? And finally, you know, a not nice person in class snaps at her and says, it doesn't matter who sold the pearl. And I tell you this long convoluted story because we're in the same situation with these Greeks. It doesn't really matter who they are, at least as far as John is concerned. You know, they show up. They are evidence of the world being drawn to Jesus. That is all we need to know. We don't even need to know, you know, what they talked with Jesus about. It's just that they're there. And so these mystery Greeks seek out Philip and Andrew, which is interesting because Philip and Andrew are both Greek names. You know, they're not like Nathaniel or, um, you know, Simon. You know, these are these are Greek in nature. They've got Greek roots. And so the question is, okay, so potentially are these disciples more Hellenized? Have they been more influenced? Have their families been more influenced by Greco-Roman culture, the language, the art? Do they maybe have relatives and friends who are non, not Galilean or Judean? Whatever it may be about Philip and Andrew, something made them seem approachable to these mystery Greeks. It made them seem safe. You know, something about them offered these Greeks a way in. So they were able to kind of get their courage up and say, hey, can we see Jesus? And, you know, then Jesus doesn't really talk to the Greeks. He talks about being glorified. He talks about seeds. He talks about resurrection and what it means to follow him. And, you know, the image of a seed being buried in the ground, dying and then coming to life in a new and abundant way is certainly appropriate as we move toward Easter. The language is really interesting though. Unless a seed goes into the earth and dies, it remains alone, manos, only, by itself. And, I mean, we're Christians, right? We're all about this dying and rising business. It is what we do, you know, it is what we proclaim. But I think often we tend to make it just about our own internal world. We make our dying and rising personal, a matter of working out our private flaws, which is certainly useful and helpful and part of it, but there's more to it. Remember, we are the body of Christ. And that means we do this whole resurrection thing together. We die to our sins, our grudges, our resentments, our memories, so that we can live in harmony with one another. It's about community. So I can't help but wonder, what have Philip and Andrew let die in their following Jesus? What parts of their lives have they laid aside? What have they given up to be part of this community of disciples instead of just being only by themselves? 
And what are these nameless mystery Greeks prepared to give up? What have they already let go here, you know, in Jerusalem for the Passover? What has changed within them? You know, what is still going to change? And finally for us, what are we willing to let die for the sake of one another? What is keeping us only by ourselves as opposed to part of a larger whole? What makes it hard for us to play with others? And I'll let you guys reflect on that for the weekend. I know I certainly will. Let us pray. Almighty and nourishing God, you have brought us safely into this day as a mother cat carrying her young. Care for us and sustain us every second, minute, and hour of this day. Thoroughly cleanse us from sin and lead us moment by moment that we may serve you and one another. In your strong name we pray, amen. I invite you to join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together to start our day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, have a blessed day, and be well.